you spent uh, a lot of time with Joe Biden. Give us a sense of the man. What's he really like? I think the thing that is hardest to capture about him from far away, to get through the television or through the kinds of usual political opportunities you might catch on the radio, is he has a certain, I would describe it as a kind of productive insecurity, by which I mean that he is, even for somebody who's been in politics as long as he has and has risen to the level he has reached, he has this very clear sense of being just a touch concerned that he doesn't know enough. And he is constantly on the lookout for that piece of information, that little sort of scrap of intel or insight that, uh, that he knows you might have and he won't have. And, and for that reason, he's, always a, he's a kind of ravenous conversationalist. Uh, it's not a casual conversation. He is, he's, it's, it's somewhat of an extraction mission where he is trying to figure out you know, in my case, I've spent a lot of time in China. He's interested in talking about that. He's tr oh, curious about what's going on in parts of the world. So that, that, I think, is one of the things that you don't see when you look at a man in his eighth decade and assume, well, he's probably settled into the kind of, shall we say, luxurious self-satisfaction of knowing that he knows enough. That is a piece of this that doesn't come across. And I think it does go back to the fact, two things. One, he started his life with a very significant stutter, as you know, and as a result, he, he kind of had to break the back of it. But it left an imprint on him psychologically as somebody who had to will his way into respect and into intellectual company. And then the other thing, of course, is he's the first U.S. president with uh, who has did not get an Ivy League education since Ronald Reagan. And uh, that is a bit of a, of a chip on his shoulder that I think actually is an asset rather than a liability. Thank you